uh, emission reductions. Now you talked about you're talking about the Papal slush fund. Basically, are we going to investi investigate Hillary Clinton's slush fund? The same type of thing. It's sort of the pay to play. And uh, we have the lead author of the IPCC. Uh, he's environmental economist Richard Toll. Based on his data, here he's working with the IPCC, which is of course you know part of the UN. There, saying 25 years of failed global warming policies have actually just made us poor. So for most people, uh, it has affected us, served to make most people a little poor, but those who benefit are those in politically favored industries or with connections to powerful politicians. Oh, and yeah. We're seeing it again here with the Pope and now with this coming out. He says the policies have failed, but what really has failed are their predictions, are right. their models. They've had to go from man-made global warming to say, well, we've got climate change and I think people are to blame. And now they've got, what's the latest term that they've come up with? Uh, you mentioned it earlier today. Anthropogenic climate disruption. Oh, yeah. Well, you know, they're going to continue to come up with different, uh, of course, that, that's essentially, they're calling it climate disruption, climate but it's disruption, still right. man-made. Yeah, exactly. Right. So what they've gone from global warming to climate change to climate disruption. And coming up, this, this conference is going to be in Paris, and they have just fired now the top French meteorologist. This is a guy who is very well known. He was a meteorologist on their uh, their biggest television station, the biggest French television station. And he came out in reaction, writing a book against climate alarmism. I began to get into iodine a few years ago because it was helping me and my family so much get healthy and detoxify. I believe our research is conclusive. This is the best iodine out there. And I know this for a fact. Nobody else has got iodine based on these pure crystals, ladies and gentlemen. For a limited time, experience the ancient power of Survival Shield X2. I believe our research is conclusive. This is the best iodine out there. Take advantage of this at InfoWarsLife.com. And why wearing a Hillary for President t-shirt might get you punched in the face. They thought it said Hillary for President. He said, I was seconds away from sending my bar back over here to, to punch you in the face. Since you're wearing a Hillary for prison shirt, you don't have to buy drinks here. Everything's on the house. Hillary for prison. Hillary's not surging, I tell you that. They're not saying that. They're not saying that. Thank you. Have a Donald Trump endorses Hillary for prison. Get your Hillary for prison 2016 t-shirt at the InfoWars store. And on the back, it says legalize freedom. Show your disapproval of Hillary by buying your t-shirt today. But what she's done is criminal. This is an American president. Just add puppet, then vote and repeat every four years. A telecom giant known for trying to block news on the internet is now going to begin scanning and censoring its customers' emails. Now, this is according to a news radio station in New York who's reporting that Verizon is going to scan the digital signatures of all inbound and outbound email messages in order to reduce the overall volume of spam on their network. But all email containing a hyperlink will be considered spam. Verizon says there's no way to opt out of this, prove that you're actually a real email. So if you're a business person needing to get information to a colleague, a student needing to get research to a fellow student, or if you're a wife who wants to share an interesting recipe with a friend, these emails will be rejected by Verizon. Now, you'll recall Matt Drudge visited the Alex Jones Show last month, and he talked about this very same thing, the, the threat of the, the foundation of the free internet being under threat. Um, he said that he was told directly by a Supreme Court justice, it's over for me because Drudge links to outside sources and these copyright laws could ban independent media outlets. Now this move by Verizon uh, follows a previous effort that the telecom giant took in the past. They actually argued in a 2012 legal brief to the US Court of Appeals uh, for the DC Circuit that just as a newspaper is entitled to decide which content to publish and where, 
broadband providers may feature some content over others. So there you go. Now that's what you're dealing with. Now we've talked earlier in the show about how George Soros, these backed, uh, George Soros backed NGOs are actively supporting the refugee crisis in order to uh, decimate Europe. But what about the Soros backed groups right here in America? Now, Dr. Jerome Corsi was on the Alex Jones show today, and he was breaking down the highly orchestrated Black Lives Matter movement and its order out of chaos plan. Dr. Jerome Corsi is a doctor in basically the economy. We had Dr. Michael Savage on uh, during the first hour. We had Colonel Schaefer in the second hour, JeromeCorsi.com. He also writes for WorldEntDaily.com, WND.com. Dr. Corsi, uh, Corsi received his Ph.D. from Harvard University in political science in 72. He's currently a senior staff reporter at World Net Daily. And I'm not going to go through the rest of his degrees and backgrounds. Folks know who he is. Uh, but one of his latest articles, Bill Ayers to Black Lives Matter, Create a Fire. So I want to cover what I call Operation Chaos. Create chaos in the Middle East. Create chaos in Ukraine. Create chaos here with open borders. Advertise all these freebies. Lower Europe's borders. Advertise freebies. Then bring in military-age men who then disappear. Uh, give Stinger missiles to Al-Qaeda. But they're trying to start a war against the police, obviously, so the feds can come as the savior. They're trying to start uh, implosion in Europe and here as well. I think I've stated what's happening. I want your details on it. And if you think it's succeeding and what you think the next shoe to drop is, Dr. Corsi, thanks for coming on with us. Uh, always a pleasure, Alex. Uh, let's take this um, article I wrote on Bill Ayers and the entire uh, analysis of Black Lives Matter. What um, Ayers is saying is that the Black Lives Matter is really a revolutionary movement. It derives from communist principles. Uh, its whole goal is to essentially stir up and intensify race and class tensions under the idea that police are inherently oppressive to black communities and get black communities to feel this. So there's an antagonism with the police that results in social conflict. I mean, this is what the you know, Marxists, what uh, Saul Linsky taught in Rules for Radicals. It's intensifying these lines of antagonism or social conflict in order to create a revolutionary environment. And what the far left, what Ayers wants out of Black Lives Matter, I mean, if you think about it seriously, it should be all lives matter. Why are we focusing on Black Lives Matter? But the underlying theme here, the hidden message, is that the police are the white society's uh, institutional, institutionalized oppressor of black people designed to keep black people into sub subjectivity. And when that resentment is fueled, the idea is that black communities will rise up against the police. There'll be more murders and assaults on police. We'll have more chaos. And that leads to the kind of social chaos and confrontation that the radical far left believes that they can use to impose a socialist society a totalitarian society, eliminating guns, eliminating the constitutional freedoms we enjoy as Americans under the idea that we've got a renewal of civil violence throughout the society. That's the basic underlying intent and goal. Uh, Ayers rejects programs like Teach for America because they, he calls them classical liberalism. They just put too many um, teachers in schools. And, and Ayers says it's not about trying to improve grades or educate black children in, in minority communities. What it's about is the fact that minority communities are a part of the colonialism that the radical left wants to blame America for continuing as a racist capitalistic society. It's really a Marxist movement this, this, you know, disguised uh, I, as an Obama re, you know, a, a reaction to the shootings that occurred over the past couple of summers and incidents where black kids, usually black thugs, encountered police and were shot. And Obama's used those incidents, Black Lives Matters have come out of this to try to produce a revolutionary movement against the police uh, that is being consciously used by the far left to disrupt society. And I wanted to expose in this article because it's Bill Ayers in an interview saying directly what his goals are 
And it makes very clear that Black Lives Matter is not just a movement for um, of the civil rights movement, for instance, in the 60s. Well, this Dr. Corsi, in and Austin it, twice, yeah. without even looking for it, I've heard chanting, and, and, and 200, 300 people with the red flags march by, the communists run the Black Lives Matter movement here. Then I've been to other cities, and it's the exact same thing. They're actually in charge of the police review board, not to help the police be better, but to actually federalize them, which, as you know, is this new announcement by the Justice Department last month where the U.N. advises these safe cities uh, acts and actually brings that in locally to monitor us uh, run by the Justice Department. I mean, it's very diabolical. Well, and I, I'm confident that before the end of the Obama administration, there'll be an effort to sign on to the U.N. Small Gun Treaty in a major way again, bypassing U.S. law, which Barack Obama seems perfectly comfortable to do, ignoring the Senate, becoming his own legislator through international bodies. The same type of approach the Obama administration is going to be taking with global warming here in the Paris Conference of the U.N. soon to impose carbon controls on the economy. And here the agenda with Black Lives Matter, the agenda uh, with the Obama signing this U.N. small guns Treaty is ultimately to disarm the American people, to create a pretext in which guns can not only be registered but confiscated. That's right. They want to start a mini localized, uh, unevenly distributed revolution against local government, uh, make it a classist uh, struggle. And, and of course, it's the it's the strong cities UN initiative, and then literally have the feds come in, then leftist feds uh, as the negotiators or as the referees. Correct, Dr. Corsi. I mean, if you get a city that goes into actual chaos and shooting, you know, where a black community would rise up and begin shooting whites or uh, or vice versa, I mean, you get that kind of an incident. Then you've got the pretext to declare martial law to come in to impose a militarized police with military assistance and go house to house and confiscate guns. I mean, I think we saw some trial runs of this with the um, Boston bombers when they were on the loose, where basically in various communities surrounding Boston, the militarized police moved in and went house to house and began asking people why they had guns and taking them away. I mean, this is, again, the far left. And Obama's intent is to use every one of these school shooting incidents, every incident he can find, where he can fan these flames of fear of you know, gun violence or fear of violence, period, as a pretext for disarming America. The Second Amendment is clearly the target. And the Second Amendment is the target because it's the one issue which stands between totalitarianism on the left and the, you know, the protection of the Constitution as much as it's been eroded. Uh, the Second Amendment still allows the American population uniquely in the world to be armed. Thanks for tuning into the show tonight. If you're watching us on YouTube, be sure and hit the subscribe button. And you can also become a subscriber to PrisonPlanet.tv. That is where you will find over 18 years of high-def content that you will not see on the mainstream media. And, of course, you help to support this operation. And we certainly appreciate it. So thank you for tuning in to the show tonight. And we'll see you here again tomorrow at 7 p.m. Central. Knockout is back. If you want a product that has 10 known ingredients that naturally get your body to relax, your brain to relax, so you get deep, restful sleep, knockout's it. Infowarslife.com. L-theanine, hops flower extract, lemon balm extract, valerian root extract, chamomile flower extract, L-tryptophan extract, melatonin, and more. All organic, all the natural sources. It's the same price as leading brands of melatonin that are three milligrams a piece. It has three milligram, the standard recommended dose for an adult. It's got the GABA. So it would probably cost $50 to take all this as separate pills. It's $19.95. You take one or two of these and it just is really clean, restful sleep is what the reviews are. It's what I've experienced. And it just synergistically puts everything in there. Infowarslife.com. That's Infowarslife.com. Or call 888-253-3139. You are watching the Infowars Nightly News, which airs 7 p.m. Central at Infowarsnews.com. And your support is helping us defend liberty worldwide.